I'm talking about myself a guitar. I want to make myself a guitar. Go to the phone book. What can I do? You want it in the phone book? How's it going on the internet? I want it on the internet. The Mark Bader guitar. So I showed up at his place. He said we're going to make a guitar. I said, I don't know how to make a guitar. I said, I know how to make a guitar. So he came, hey, you came to learn how to make a guitar. So we made a guitar. It was cool. It was really cool. I said, I want you on that mother of pearl. He said, that would be quite difficult. But, you know, I'll do it for you if that's what you like. I said, I want three headstocks. He says, well, if you're hungry, if you must. And then I decided I want to make myself a little ukulele. He says, we got loads of these little ukuleles. We can make a little ukulele for you. So I made one. So if you want to make yourself a guitar, get yourself down to the bed of guitar, make a man easy to live up somewhere there. Exactly know where we are, but we're near air. <laughs> Thursday morning, I caught myself. The train to Glasgow, changed to get to air. Went down and played in the firehouse. We played some music, I drank a little bit of Guinness. We had a nice time. Say, come down to my place and we'll make a guitar. And the kind of guitar that you like, I've seen some sort of all about it stuff. I've seen some sort of electrified guitars. I've seen some sort of ukuleles. I've seen all kinds of guitars. I've been out there today. I was out there today. Did something cool with my guitar. He sort of took the thing out, put it back in. I felt like a real professional guitar player when he did it. It was really cool and fun. I liked it. But I got quite do it myself, so you gotta get yourself a guitar maker man who knows exactly what he's doing. Mark Bailey. Mark Bailey. He knows what he's doing. Making guitars. He made this guitar. I like this guitar. It plays nice. So if you want to make a guitar or need to get a guitar or something you need fixing, just go see the man Mark Bailey. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody. Hey, hello folks. Welcome to the Bailey Workshop for the Guitar Making Channel. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, how to design your own custom guitar. How about that then? So, um, yeah, we're going to do the Too Long Didn't Watch version in a minute. <laughs> for you guys who haven't got the time. And then um, we're go basically going to play you a little four minute film which is a complete overview of the design process. I know some of you have probably seen it before, especially if you're on the course, but it won't do no harm, especially if, if you've not seen it before, just to quickly go through the entire design process from start to finish in overview in four minutes. So it's actually um, about five hours worth of material condensed down to four minutes. So it's a very, very brief overview, but it shows you every stage of the operation of designing your own custom guitar. So um, we're going to get to that in a minute. And then um, when we've got through the too long didn't watch version, 
Then we're going to go into every section in a little bit more detail. But we haven't got five hours today, so we can't go into every single aspect of it like we do on the course. Um, by the way, when I mention the course, what I'm talking about is um, for the past five years, we've been trying to build the best online guitar making academy in the known universe. So that's what we're all about. And um, my background is I learned how to build guitars in a factory. And so what I did was I took those factory methods and learned how to do them on um, basically a bench like this, just any old bench, um, using hand tools like routers. And uh, you do need a bandsaw, preferably a bandsaw. But um, there are a few tools that you'll need. I've made a whole video on that, essential tools for guitar making. Um, but <clears throat> what it's all about is just showing folks, people think you need to be really clever and some kind of genius to build a guitar. You really don't. Anybody can do it. I've taught over 400 people to do it face to face right here in the Bailey workshop. And um, we spent the last five years filming the process um, and then building a step by step online course to designing and building your own guitar completely from scratch, um, electric or acoustic guitar, starting with a blank piece of paper like this, all the way through until you've got your finished guitar that might need tuning. Better. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, in short, we're going to go through the guitar design overview process and then we're going to go through it in a little bit more detail and then before we finish um, Carol's put together a little slideshow of um, some of the guitars that we've made they're all the same basic design but with lots of different custom elements so I'm going to show you um, and like on the course here's the left-handed version by the way um, left-handed version is no problem you just turn everything around it's left-handed so um, that is one of the reasons you might want to make your own custom guitar, by the way. Why would you want to make a custom guitar when you can just go and buy one? Well, um, when you go and buy a guitar, you're limited to either the guitars that are in the shop or the ones that you can see in the online shop that you can't even play to test. Um, when you build your own guitar, you can dial in every single property of that guitar to make it literally your own completely your own. Um, so there's no such thing as a perfect guitar. Um, maybe to get all your design elements in, you might need to make several guitars. For instance, you can't have a guitar that's got a fixed bridge and got a trem on it. Um, having said that, there are lock-in trems available. Um, so whatever it is that you want on your guitar, you need to make all those decisions first. So what you're about to see, the design process, is actually a decision-making process. And every line you draw is basically represents a decision made. So it's very fast, the film is, and um, if you want to use this as an instruction guide, you'll probably have to stop and start it. But if you want the full version, which is five and a half hours long, it goes into full detail of every design aspect of the guitar, then you need to head over to the Guitar Making Academy at guitarmaking.co.uk Carol's trashing the workshop over there Carol, what are you doing? <laughs> Head over to the Guitar Making website and sign up as a premium member and then you get access to um, the full courses which is design and build your own electric or acoustic guitar So uh, if you line the film up ready, Carol um, yeah, so this is the basic version of the guitar that we make. Um, but with just a few tweaks here and there, there's a million, there's an infinite amount of modifications that you can do to customise the guitar and make it your own. Um, you know, not least of which is, is actually changing the shape. But without changing the shape, there's still an awful lot you can do. Um, so we'll talk about shapes, construction style, hardware, pickups and finish options um, after the after the short film so um if carol if you line it up, I think it's lined up. Are you, um, all right yeah you can put, yourself in. put myself in 
Brilliant. So you have to yeah, press press K or play. Can you stop it? Can we start it again? Please, hang on. We need to turn the volume up. Because it's very quiet. With you in a minute! Okay, let's go. Right, let's go. Now I'm just going to give you an overview, summary of the whole drawing process. So the first thing I'm going to draw is the centre line. Every guitar has a centre line. Quite right. So the next thing to do is to draw the nut. So there's the first draw across. decision made. Each side and make a mark. The next mark we make is for the scale length. I've chosen a scale length 25 inches. From the takeoff side of the nut, I'm going to mark 25 inches. You could choose any scale length you like. The next decision is to choose how many frets. I'm marking the last fret, 22nd fret, plus one. End of the fretboard. We've got the ends, we need the width of the fretboard. So where does that come from? It comes from the bridge. My E to E spacing is here, and then I've added four mil either side. Now I can draw on the sides of my neck. So the four mil either side there, in case you missed it, that's so that the strings don't fall off the side of the neck. If you, uh, if you make the strings too close to the side of the fretboard, they're just going to fall off like that. So we allow four mil, and then we can draw on our fretboard. Okay. I've chosen this headstock. I like this headstock, I drew it myself. It's a nice roundy shape. If you do design your own, you have to be really careful about where you put your tuners. Now, the pickup locations, there needs to be two mil gap between the end of the fretboard and the start of the pickup. We need to make sure this is on the center. So we line that up and then we can use these two marks to align it on the center line. So it prints through quite faint. And once you've gone all over the lines, you can peel it back and just check. The back pickup is 20 mil from the scale length line. I've marked two humbuckers. So these measurements that I give you are general measurements that work for, in this case, a guitar with two humbuckers on. If you're using a different setup like single coils, then there's another um, set of PDFs that you can download on the course. You'll need to be a premium member for, for that. The next job is to draw the body shape. One thing you could do if you were making your own shape, if you're not sure how big to make it, get another guitar, roughly draw around it, use that as a starting point. Why not? The job of the body is purely just to hold all the other parts in place. Now I'm not going to tell you about every different type of knob and switch there is. In this case, I'm just going to choose simply a volume, a tone and a switch. Draw around them and then we need to make a custom control cavity. All it is is a hole that's big enough to accommodate these switches. Um, and there's also this smaller recess. This is where the control cavity cover fits. We're going to talk about the... the um... Just notice those little nubs there. That's where the screws go in for the cover plate, so you just need to leave little nubs for the screws neck joint style and then we've got body styling which is the carving at the very least what we do on the back is usually we do this um, we call it the belly carve because we're looking at the front of the drawing and the belly carve is on the back then we use a dotted line to represent that we started with a center line and then we made decisions as we went each decision we made I, I wrote down up here actually I filled it in at the end but don't tell anyone this list here, all your decisions, 
This is your order list. So now you know what, what you need to order. There we go. Well done, Carol, thank you. So yeah, the too long didn't watch version. Uh, hopefully somebody somewhere found that useful. Um, yeah, if you did, by the way, make sure to do all the youtube -y stuff for us. We're trying to inform YouTube um, that a channel's worth watching. So how we do that is by clicking like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon if you haven't already done so. Um, it really helps us a lot, um, helps the channel to grow and it helps keeping guitar making alive in the UK in these strange and difficult times. So thank you to everybody who's our premium members. Um, well now what we're going to do next is do uh, a round of questions and see where that leads us. So hopefully Carol's got some questions over there for us. And we're just going to go through each um, section of the design. Is this working? Yeah. Oh, right, so, um, hello everybody. Lots of, um, there's people from all over the place in uh, the workshop today, Mark. Hello, um, YouTube. You're, you've got America, Belgium, the Welcome to everybody. Sweden, we've got um, a couple of new people. Mr Cheese Whisk. Cheese Whisk is in the house. And he signed hey, up, up cheese whisk. today. Um, thank you for your lovely comments. Yes, um, partly inspired by you today, this is, because, um, let me see if I can find it. We've got a... Uh, this is uh, <laughs> cheese whisk. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is you, isn't it, cheese whisk? You went on the uh, went on the internet and bought yourself a body blank. <laughs> um, you were saying your adventure started with this guitar. This is a um, a kit that you bought from somewhere. So everything was pre-made, and you just basically screw it together. And um, great job, by the way, especially if you've applied the finish yourself. Top job. I don't think there's any shame in starting with a kit if you want to get into guitar making. But what we're all about is, um, you know, building from actual body blanks and neck blanks. So from from raw pieces of wood like this. And uh, yeah, as you can see, um, uh, our cheese whisk. He started with a kit, and then he was telling me that he went on the internet and and bought a big lump of wood and now he's not sure where to start so um that's partly why i decided to do this today so so thanks for that um cheese whisk um yeah where to start a lot of people do this um they find a bit of wood in their shed and they go oh that would make a good guitar or um their, their mums or their wives table they think that'll make a nice guitar or you go on eBay after a few drinks or and you buy yourself a beautiful piece of wood and you think that'll make a nice guitar and then you think oh no no how do I do it what am I going to do now so what I want you to do you've already done this cheese whisk so m massive thanks and kudos to you the best thing my best advice to you is to sign up as a premium member and then you can go through the five and a half hour long design your own guitar course and make all your decisions along the way um, and actually make yourself a working drawing. So um, that's what I recommend. And the guitar that we design, I design in front of you on the actual course, it is basically this, uh, this bandsman. This is the left-handed version. Um, but as I say, you can customise it to your heart's content. But the what, the direction that I'm coming, f excuse me. Oh, I don't you love it? It's live. <laughs> That's my cup of tea coming through. <laughs> uh, the direction that I'm coming from is that uh, what I want you to do is I want you to start with the basics, something like this. Really nice guitar, by the way, but fairly basic. And start with the basics, and then once you've got them under your belt then you can you the world's your oyster and you can make pretty much anything you want 
as I'm going to show you in a minute, when you see um, what people have been building on our course using my simple methods. So Carol's desperately jumping up and down with her hand up over there. Go on, Carol. Well, you said you said let's take some questions and then you started answer. talking. Right. So um, got some some good questions coming in. So um, first question, Gary G has asked, um, uh, how do you change this for a bolt-on neck? Can you make a bolt-on neck? Okay. Well, yeah. The main difference is with a bolt-on neck is you start with a thinner neck blank, and on the body you need to add. A lump here so a bolt-on neck has a modification on the body so there's a body heel so this is the neck heel and on a bolt-on neck you also need a body heel let me show you a pattern and I'll show you what I mean it's a great question because it gives me a chance to show you our patterns so here, here's some body shape templates. By the way, Carol's been working really hard. Carol's been working really hard behind the scenes and our, our Darren King with his CNC machine to make some of these patterns for you. So we've got um, an essential list of essential patterns that I think you need to make a guitar. Um, things like your pickup pattern, neck slot pattern, um, and cavity for the electrics, there's a pattern for that. Um, and there's a couple of extra ones we've chucked in, like the body template and a headstock template. Um, some of these are optional, you don't need to use them, but the advantage of a pattern is that it speeds things up a whole lot and it also adds accuracy and repeatability. So if you're making more than one guitar, you should definitely be thinking about making a set of patterns first or buying a set from us or from anywhere else. You know, you can buy them from anywhere you like. Um, but the idea of doing a design is so that you know what patterns to make and then you can use those patterns to make your guitar. So, shoot, well, Carol. Good question. So, um, Cheese Whisk has um, said, cheers for all this, but um, he said, do you recommend making a bandsman first, because he quite fancies he'd like to make an explorer. <laughs> yes. So, I didn't actually get around to finishing the question. I won't tell you so, what Jim McMillan wants to make. <laughs> so, here's the Bailey bandsman. Now, this guitar was designed for you guys. Um, I designed a guitar to make it as easy as possible for you to make. Now, look at the shape. Lovely, nice, round curves. There's no sharp angles, no sharp curves. Sharp corners and angles are more likely to chip and break, um, and they're just harder to do. A nice roundy shape like this is, is nice and easy. Um, this would be for a set neck, and if I needed to make a bolt-on version, then what I would do is add, if I just show you, I would, I would add a lump like there to bolt the neck on. So here's a few bolt-on necks. So, I mean, you'll probably recognise that shape. It's quite a popular shape. And this area here is what we call the body heel. So that's where the neck bolts onto for a bolt-on neck. So the main difference between a set neck and a bolt-on is the body needs to have a heel. So if we were making a set neck out of this, for instance, then what we could do Oh, sorry, we'll go down there. What we could do is we could just chop that heel off. If this was a set neck, I could do a nice shape like this, for instance. I could lose that corner altogether. And that would make, um, you know, some people call that an all access neck joint. I've seen it called all sorts of things. Um, guitar manufacturers and makers, they're all trying to stand out from everybody else and they do things like they invent things that have already been invented. <laughs> so I've seen this called the all access neck joint. And basically, they've just chopped this off. Um, yeah, you can also get an all access neck joint by instead of using the, 
the neck anchor plate, you can use neck anchor ferrules and you can offset one to bring it in a bit. Um, so yeah, the main difference between a set neck and a bolt on is this extra body heel regarding the body shape. And then obviously, um, here's a, a bolt on neck that's in process. Oh, here's another one. So obviously with a bolt on neck, you use less wood. So it's half the amount of wood. For a set neck, you have to have um, more of a heel. It needs to be deeper and to give it the to give it the gluing strength. Basically, if you just glued a bolt on neck in one of these small ones, it wouldn't have enough um, surface area to get a strong enough glue joint. So that's why you don't see it. And most set necks you'll find are made from a two inch blank like this. And that has the advantage that you can put a headstock angle on. And I think for most people at home, to be honest, I think this style of neck is easier to make because it comes down to how, how the truss rod is fitted. So here's a, here's a two inch neck blank for a set neck and there's the truss rod slot. So the first thing we would do is the truss rod slot and it's much easier to do in a big solid piece of wood like this. Once you've cut the shape out, it becomes really tricky to hold. So we do all our machining. Um, I think the, the reason I've um, chosen a set neck for the basic course, well, A, because everybody else does a strat or a telly and I wanted to do something different. B, because I think it's the easiest style of neck for you to replicate making at home. And I know that from teaching over 400 people how to do it live here, face to face. In, in the workshop. Uh, yeah. Um, and then of course, you've got bolt on set neck and you've also got through neck style of construction. Um, and the main difference there, of course, is that you need uh, longer pieces of wood for your neck. So more questions? Well, that's a good point to ask um, because uh, Cheesewick, then, Cheesewick? Cheesewisk then asked, um, can you buy a body blank big enough for something like an explorer. Explorer. <laughs> something like this. Um, no. <laughs> but I'll tell you what you, what you can do. Um, uh, I say no rather flippantly. Um, of course, you might find a body blank out there big enough, but they are quite rare and it's extraordinarily wasteful. <laughs> Cutting off a massive chunk, you could make a make three guitars. Um, yeah, so I'll show you what we do. Um, if I can find a body blank, unfortunately, I made Lewis put all the body blanks away yesterday. So just bear with me one second, I'll go and get one. for requesting that I had a camera and I, I, I think I um, a microphone is is okay as long as I know remember to turn it off but I think he wasn't camera, the only one that requested yeah I think a camera might be one step too far um, frankly but thank you <laughs> yeah there's a whole load of reasons which maybe I'll articulate another time but anyway back to Mark yeah Carol balked at actually having her own camera why, do, why was that Right, so here is an Explorer type guitar on a standard body blank. As you can see, it doesn't fit by quite a long way. I'll show you what we do. Um, if I just draw this on. So if we line that up there, I could draw this on the back. So then we know we need, we need this much here. And there's usually somewhere else where we can get that from. It looks like in this case, we would have to make a three piece. So I would probably, um, I'd probably take this piece and cut it. 
Uh, obviously it depends on your piece of wood obviously but if we took this piece off and cut it and we just folded it round to here then you would have an almost perfect match um, and well if we draw that on you can see you'd get enough out of that one piece for two for both of our pieces uh, but you'd have to do it in two pieces one two something like that your piece might be different sometimes you can get it um, just with two pieces sometimes three but you're basically joining it here to join a piece on might be better using that piece there if you've got enough one thing we could do maybe is move the whole thing up a bit to give us enough here but basically you end up with uh, with a joint somewhere here like that that's where I marked the edge of the board so we need to find another lump to join on just try and keep the grain going in the same direction that's all I'd say when you're laughing uh, if you do a good job of the join well hopefully it'll be virtually invisible that's what we aim for um, if you want to know how we achieve that I did do a video on um, joining the body blank I think it's called um, I think there's a free video on YouTube but also it's definitely included on the course okay uh, just what, show you another, another, do you want another question? go on keep going I'll just show you some more body blanks while you're talking okay, well, um, uh, these have all been naturally made into guitars by the way and what we're trying to do with the um, what we're trying to do with the site is create an archive of um, patterns. So eventually all of these are going to be, um, we're in the process of drawing around them, digitizing them and putting them up. So our premium members can download them for free. So that's what it's all about. We're trying to get all these online for you guys. At the moment we've got the basic patterns all there for you. And there is also a whole set of free patterns um, the links are all in the description um, if you want to get yourselves hold of those. More questions, Carol? Well, yeah, if you've got time to squeeze them in. So these, here's our humbucker and P90 patterns. Um, and there are a range of these, like I say, that are going to be available for sale on the website. Go on, Em. Right, well, apparently TV101 is getting interference um, Hey, TV 101 it It's Carol. Yeah, I think that's what he means. And um, but now that so now there's suggestions that I get my own personal. Oh, taser. she loves to interfere. Anyway, right. It's a so, favourite thing, no, folks. You keep changing the subject. So Louis, Louis, your student, the student, you know, the young guy that's building for his uh, dissertation. Oh, for the school project. thing. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, hey, Louis. Right. So he said his his parcel arrived. His stuff looks great. Yeah. Um, Thank you, and he also said he Thank noticed you. what he's building is going to have a wraparound bridge, um, and he notices that it's it, it should be on an angle. How big is that angle? Um, it's basically an eighth of an inch further behind on the base side. If you measure your scale length and add 1.5 mil or a sixteenth of an inch that gives you your the exact position where your um, your thinnest E string should sit from the exact takeoff point of the nut to the exact takeoff point on the saddle so it's your scale length plus an intonation adjustment so intonation in case you don't know whenever you bend a string you raise the pitch we know that as guitarists don't we so when you bend a string pitch goes up so whenever you fret any note you're bending the string slightly you're raising the pitch slightly so to compensate they move the bridge is moved back slightly um, it's called a compensation adjustment intonation compensation adjustment what we do when we're building a guitar is we build in on the treble side it's a left-handed guitar on the treble side we build in about a sixteenth of an inch or 1.5 mil intonation so scale length plus 
your intonation adjustment, and that's to where the saddle takes off from. Now on the base side, it's an eighth of an inch further back from that. So wherever that comes out, add three mil or an eighth of an inch, and that'll give you your base side. And that gives you your rough angle. Um, In my experience, if you do that accurate enough, then when you put your bridge on, you'll probably find it'll be perfect. If you follow my instructions on the course, most people find they haven't even got to touch the intonation. Um, we're using a wrap over bridge like this, which has very minimal intonation adjustment. So I'll show you the difference. This one, it's just got a the B and the G intonate. Um, main advantage of this bridge, it just fits on two holes. So it's very simple to fit. Um, and if you use just standard strings like nines or tens and follow my instructions, you'll find that you probably won't even need to set the intonation. Almost perfect. This was designed by Trevor Wilkinson. He's a very clever man. And it's all arranged so that if you just put it in the right place, it'll fit perfectly. That's the kind of bridge that we use on the course because I think it's the easiest to fit. But you can, you can use my method of locating the bridge. When I say locating, what I mean is finding the exact position where it's supposed to go. You can use my instructions for locating the bridge. And then you just need to mark, what, however it's mounted, you just need to mark the screw holes or whatever. So that's all covered on the course. I'll just show you the difference. So that is a, um, a standard wrapper, wrap over bridge. I guess I might as well get it out. It's called a wrap over because the strings literally, um, strings literally wrap over and they're fixed in those holes underneath. So this is another wrap over bridge, but this one has got intonation adjustment separate intonation adjustment for each string. So on the left-handed guitars, we have to put this on because um, this one is, is intonated for right-handed guitars, you see. Because as you mentioned, it's angled back. Um, as I was saying about intonation earlier, when you bend a string, it raises the pitch. Well, that has more of an effect on a bass string. So the fatter the string, the more the pitch rises, which is why the bass side is angled back an eighth of an inch further than the treble side. Hopefully that's answered that question. So, yeah, go on. What are we doing? What's happening? Wow! Is that a super chat? From <laughs> How do you choose or decide what pickups to use? Why some guitars got one pickup or two or why three, right? I've got other questions. How do you choose pickups then? Can you take that off again, Carol? Okay. Cheers, Mitch. Much appreciated. Right, if I'm making a guitar, then it's usually because I want to sound like Stevie Ray Vaughan or I want to sound like Jimmy Page or whatever. And so what I do is I hunt down or I want to sound, make a sound like a particular guitar on a particular album or something. Usually I'm inspired by something to build this guitar. And if it's not for me, because frankly I don't make <laughs> myself many guitars, I'm usually building guitars for other people. So I ask the guy, I say, look, what do you want to sound like? What do you want it to sound like? And he'll say his favorite guitar player or whatever it is. And then we, we hunt down what guitar he uses, what pickups are on it. So if you want to sound like this, then you should probably try using these pickups. So that's my advice on that, is to find out what your favourite player uses and, um, and hunt those down. Um, while we're on the subject of pickups then, um, here's the standard pickups that we include on the, in the kit, which is... Um, so we do supply a kit, but it's um, in our kit, they're just blanks, body blanks, so there's nothing pre-made. Apart from, um, we do supply pre-made fretboard. Um, we'll supply you a fretboard blank if you prefer to make your own. 
Uh, and you, if you want to specify the exact scale length, you can do that. Just ask. And if there's something in the kit that you don't like and you'd rather switch out for something else, then just email us and just ask. Um, you know, we're a very small company. There's only a couple of us trying to do everything. And um, we just can't put everything in the shop. We've got um, masses and masses of guitar Hi. stuff. It's, it's like uh, Aladdin's cave in here of, for guitar stuff. But we just haven't got the time to put it all online. So um, if there is something that you want, it might be worth just contacting us and seeing if we've got it because, uh, yeah, I'm surrounded by stuff here that's, that's not on the, the website. Um, um, just while we're on the subject of pickups, though, here's what we supply in our... Um, the standard kit is Wilkinson humbuckers. These are what I think are the best bang for your buck. Um, of Trevor Wilkinson, like I say, the same guy who makes designed the bridge. Um, I used to work with Trevor and he's a very, very clever man. And Trevor actually um, met the guy who designed the original patent applied for um, Humbucker. Um, and so he knows all the original specs and all that kind of stuff. And he's dialed all them into his range of pickups. I think these are the best bang for your buck regarding pickups, that's why we use them. Um, and also he's an old mate, isn't he? Um, but if you do want to upgrade, then I recommend these are, these are our friends as well. We're not affiliated in any way to any of these people, but um, I will only recommend what I think is, is the best. So, um, yeah, best handmade pickups in the UK. Better not call. Um, we should maybe do a course one day on making your own pickups. Um, it's definitely something I want to get into at some point. So, uh, yeah, um, the, the, these guys are awesome because you can literally ring them up and say, I'm making a guitar and I want to sound like Jimmy Page. And they'll say, right, you need blah de blah de blah And they'll tell you exactly what pickups you want. So that's one of the main reasons we like these guys. And they will custom make you a pickup, um, especially for you, if that's what you want. So um, Wilkinson or Bare Knuckle, um, and we do use a lot of Seymour Duncan's EMGs and every other kind of pickup. You specify what you want and we'll do it for you. Go, Carol. Well, I just want to say on that, that the, the, one of the reasons that we um, have supported Bare Knuckle over the years is when we started, before we moved to Scotland, uh, Bare Knuckle were just starting up and it was literally 10 mils. Um, yeah, so we've seen them grow home. from... They're, they're, I mean, they've grown, they, they're a massive, massive, they're a big employer down yeah. um, in Cornwall they are. But now the landscape has changed and there's lots of smaller hand makers um, who are getting really good reviews and people who are ordering custom guitars like Roland um, and people who come on the courses are also <coughs> commissioning smaller makers. Um, yeah, there's hundreds of um, smaller pickup makers all over the country. I've still got questions about so we like to support these guys rather than um, the massive companies. But we make custom guitars and I'll put every, whatever you want in it, like I say. Um, but as I was, I've tried to steer you towards um, keeping it simple, that's what I would recommend. So try and keep it simple, especially for your first guitar, and then the sky's the limit. So do quickly do bridges. That's the that's the standard bridge, um, but there's lots of other types available, and um, but they do add complexity to the build and a lot of time. So I don't recommend that you use a trem for your first build. Go on, you're still going, Carol. More questions. Well, you said keep it simple, so it seems like this is the best time to ask this question. Go on. So, um, right at the very beginning, before we even started, Eddie Cameron asked a question, um, and Jim McMillan followed it up. So Jim McMillan said he's going to make a seven-string baritone, active, semi-acoustic, multi-scale at the net end, nut end, um, fretless at the dusty end uh, guitar. Is this too much for a first build? <laughs> well, I wouldn't recommend it for your first build, obviously. Um, um, but Eddie Cameron um, asked right at the top of the end, can you explain how multi-scale necks work? Um, and uh, is, is that for today or for another? Yeah, well, I'll quickly explain how a multi-scale fret neck works. Um, that would be like a fanned fret guitar, where the, the, the frets would be fanned like that because 
you've got two different scale lengths, one for the top E and one for the bottom E, and then you draw a line in between to join them up. You need to decide which fret you want to be flat level. You should probably use the around the seventh fret, but check. Um, line those up and then the rest will be offset from there. And then all the other ones in between just joined up with a straight line. Um, so you only really need two scale lengths, one for each outer string, and then the rest of them kind of fall into place. And you just need to decide which one you want to be straight. And the rest of them will fan naturally. So that's the very short version of um, multi-scale guitar. Definitely not recommended for the per first build because it just makes everything a lot more difficult. Well, of course, um, then there's quite a lot. You'll have to look later, check the chat for all the other suggestions. If we don't get to any of your um, <laughs> suggestions or questions today, um, apologies, don't worry about it. Um, head over to the forum. It's free to join on the forum. And you can see what, what we're all up to, all our members are building and that. And uh, yeah, it's free to join and you can uh, just lurk if you want. But I just want to say, if you do go to the forum, don't be off put by the spectacular amazingness of what everybody's doing. Um, everybody goes off script in the end and ends up customising their design. And I'm amazed at what uh, the quality of what people are doing. Um, you know, I just arm you with a little bit of information and then it's off to you. So um, I do recommend you keep it simple to start with. But then, like I say, the world is your oyster. Once you've got those few basic methods under your belt, try and keep it simple to start with. A very wise woman once said that to me. <laughs> yeah, well, there was talk of thing, banjos and folding things. So I think you should look in the chat oh, yeah. before you make decisions about that. Um, so we've got some more questions. Um, James Bisser is asking, how do you make an all-access heel on a set neck arch top? I think that's what he wants to know. Is that one for another day, well, maybe? Well, that's one for another day, yes. Um, I think the short answer is you don't. <laughs> but, um, well, let's see if anybody's got any ideas. Then let us know in the comments. And, um, I will say though that some styles of guitar um, suit certain features better than others, right? So if you put a, a Gibson style bridge on a Strat, it works, but not very well, because you end up with, the bridge would be very high, so you end up with a neck angle to suit. Um, so certain things suit guitar, certain guitars better than others. And you get to learn those things through experience. And what I tend to do is like, for instance, if you wanted to make a, an arch stock guitar with a, an all access neck, I would probably call that a hybrid guitar. You're making a hybrid style guitar. So all these things are possible, but you're going off script. And I may or may not be able to help you, <laughs> depending on how far off script you go. So I've left the mic on, which is always bad. That's um, all right. So uh, Tomaz, uh, he's, he's in the house today, and he's asked, um, uh, have you come across Evertune bridges before? I don't remember. Oh, what that'll be the, um, yeah, the, uh, the bridges that tune themselves, electrical motors inside which tune themselves. Um, apparently it nearly works. <laughs> so yeah, I haven't actually tried one personally but I've tried the, um, the tuners, the self-tuning tuners. Um, yeah, if you Google that, you'll find a video that we made with the self-tuning tuners. I think it's one of those things, it seems like a good idea, but um, there's too much to go wrong. Um, so, most guitar players learn how to tune their guitar fairly early on. And so, you know, is it worth spending all that money and expense and time and gear and energy and electricity on something where you can just tune it yourself? <laughs> uh, I suppose if you're playing big gigs all the time and you want to make sure you're always in tune, and, but there'll be a button or something that you have to press to make it tune. Um, and if you press that by accident and you're halfway through your song, 
mayhem could ensue. That's what we found with the auto tune and tuners anyway. And so it's one of those things that's gone in the, uh, it seemed like a good idea at the time draw, but your opinion may vary. Um, yeah, let us know if you've got a guitar with the Evertune bridges. But I happen to know someone... It's a fully manual one. Oh, I might be talking about something I don't know then. Um, well, we'll look it up. I don't remember buying one. Leave us some links and we'll check it out in the description. Um, but yeah, we've used most types of bridges that are available. Um, I suppose, while I'm on the subject, I just want to say that the easiest upgrade you can do when it comes to bridges or any kind of hardware is to just simply change the colour. So most hardware is available in chrome, black or gold. The easiest thing you can do is just put a gold one on. Bling. Instant bling. Um, and while we're on the subject of hardware colour, I suppose, there's shiny and satin as well. It's something to watch for. There's satin gold and shiny gold. Black and... Yeah, and there's also... And they keep coming out with new ones all the time. Um, so... Hardware colour is a nice, easy upgrade that you can do. Um, you know, it fits in the same holes and everything, so uh, no extra difficulty, just maybe a bit of extra expense. We you say hello to Andrew Coelella? Hi, Andrew, Coelella. whatever she said. Hello, Andrew. He says, are we live? Yeah, yes, we're we live. <laughs> right, we've got... Um, live from the workshop. Right, Mitch, Mitch is um, World Travel. Yeah. Keep, I'm so used to shouting. Mitch as World Travel said, um, "Will you do you ship to um, Australia?" And and I, I replied, "Yes, but not certain woods." So I don't know if it's worth you mentioning. About yeah. So uh, while we're on the subject of shipping, then we ship all over the world, but there are certain countries um, where there are restrictions. So we're not allowed to send rosewood to certain countries. So. Um, yeah, there have been times where people have ordered and the, the website, unfortunately, has allowed people to order. So what we do is we send you an email and we'll, we'll ask if it's okay to substitute something else um, and priced accordingly. So, yeah, if you are anywhere in the world, you can order from us pretty much anywhere in the world. Um, we won't send couriers into war zones. <laughs> but apart from that, Carol will hand deliver it. Um, so, uh, Here's another quick custom upgrade you can do. You can change the, um, the tuner buttons. So you can change from chrome to gold, but you can also um, mother of pearl or ebony. So you don't have to have the standard chrome tuner buttons. You can also change the tuner buttons. Go on. Right, so um, right at, at the beginning, Clinton uh, Superclunk mentions that he uses, uh, he thinks sort of big pieces of wrapping paper are good for designing um, stuff. Yes. But we, uh, so, uh, yeah. TV wrapping paper, I find, is a bit, um, it rips a bit too easy. So I use, um, this is, um, actually, wrapping paper is absolutely fine. Um, well, over here it usually comes in square sheets and aren't big enough. If you can get rolls, then brilliant. But this is lining paper or oh, wallpaper. When, when was the last time you wrapped? A when present? did I last wrap a present? It, it does come on rolls. <laughs> well, I'm going to turn them right yeah, off now. we usually wrap our presents in the car on the way to wherever we're going. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> this is lining paper, for, or or um, just cheap wallpaper. Get the stuff out of the bargain bin. Um, but yeah, wrapping paper, that might work. This is what I use, which is um, just cheap lining paper. And you get a huge long roll. Design as many guitars as you like on that. Okay, TV101 says we need to learn about how to finish our custom guitars once we've designed and built them. <laughs> is there any chance of some help with the finishing? No, it's funny you should mention that, because. What I'm working on right now as we speak is obviously the, um, one of the best ways to customise your guitar is to spray it a different colour. So um, what I'm currently working on in November, we're filming um, 
the finishing course. So how to finish a guitar. Um, it's gonna be oiled finishes, matte finishes, and uh, gloss finishes using any product, whether it's um, cellulose or our fancy UV paint system. Um, the basic methods are all the same. And I'm gonna be showing you how to do um, all these different colors that you can see up here, different guitar colors, basically any guitar color. Um, so if you want to get yourself on that, you'll need to become a premium member and look out for that. That's come in as soon as I can get it done. Um, fingers crossed that will be launched before Christmas. Um, I'm dedicating the whole of November basically to, to that. So we've also already filmed um, quite a bit. Um, we've already filmed quite a few um, little bonus sections, um, but the actual main part of the course I'm still working on. So keep an eye on for that and keep an eye out for that. Cheers TV 10101. I hope my belly rumbling isn't coming through on the mic. Uh, uh, Matt Tomon says, but th this, is, this is November. You do know that it is November. He has yeah, no we're idea. working on it now. Right, okay. We're working on it as we speak. He said it is November now. Did you not hear me say we've already filmed lots of it. <laughs> we haven't filmed the main bulk part of it yet, but we've already filmed um, quite a bit of it. Time, space, dates, not his thing. Yeah, I'm um, not very good at that. You've got another couple of... It'll be done when it's done. I know that. Right, number, another couple of questions. Oh. And I already know it's going to be awesome. Right, so Tom has just a follow-up on that. is saying, are you covering nitro as well? Well, the methods that we use are going to be pretty much the same. Whatever, um, whatever actual product you're spraying, the methods are the same. So, yes, it will be covering everything that you need to know whether you're using nitro, um, two-pack, or in the unlikely event that you win the lottery, um, a UV system like what we've got. And I put my life savings into a couple of years ago. <laughs> um, uh, Superclunk says, um, any chance of a, a teaser trailer at some point? I'm sure there'll be something coming up, yeah. We'll, do, we'll see what we can do. Right, so oh, you've yeah. got a couple more questions, right? Yeah, I'm just we'll, while you're we'll talking, I'll just show hour. some more tuners. So, um, tuners. Right, Mark. Eraser one hundred and one YT says, has Mark ever experimented building a guitar with an adjustable pickup by putting it on rails or something? Um, not personally. I don't think I've personally done that. Um. Obviously, it's one of those ideas that comes up from time to time. Um, it's been tried. I think Dan Electro made one um, way back in the day. Uh, I don't know why it didn't really take off. I think it's probably because <laughs> most guitar players, I don't know if you're like this yourself, but I usually put it on my favourite setting <laughs> and just leave it. So I might turn it up in a solo and turn it back down again. I might flick from rhythm to lead, but um, that's pretty much all I'm going to do. Um, when you're designing a guitar, the idea with the pickups really is to put them as far apart as you can get them. Because they're, they're, if you put... These, these pickups are virtually identical. Um, the main difference is this one's just slightly more powerful. Um, but to all intents and purposes, they're virtually identical. The reason they sound different is because they're in a different physical place under the string. They're sensing a different part of the string. When you play this, this pickup, the string's moving quite a lot here. But down here, it's hardly moving at all. So it needs to be overwound slightly to boost the signal. But also, if you, you've probably done this, if you pick a string right down here by the bridge, um, it's better if you use a plectrum, but I'll just use my nail. Can you hear? It sounds really toppy. A lot of high end frequencies. Whereas if I pluck it down here, it's a full round fat sound. I don't know if that's coming through, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Well, the pickup's the same. It does the same thing. This one sounds full and round. This one sounds thin and cutting. It cuts through the mix, more high-pitched cutting 
and this one's more fatter, roundy, rhythm sound. So if you've got one on a rail, it's really a bit of a disadvantage. You can't flick between the two sounds as fast. You'd have to physically move it, which wouldn't be much fun in the middle of a song, would it? So I think that's probably why it didn't take off. Probably um, more of a disadvantage than an advantage. Um, maybe good for prototyping and finding out the exact best position to put a pickup to get a desired sound that you might like. Um, so maybe good for prototyping, but then you would maybe mark the position and make, a, a, make it more permanent in that position. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Next question, Carol. Okay, so um, right, you've got um, a question from Eddie Cameron here. Um, when you're, he's, well, if you're t changing a, a guitar that has SSS pickups, so three single coils to HSH, how would you protect the finish? If you're going to route um... um yeah it's not always feasible to do that because the humbucker surround might not necessarily cover the hole for your rear pickup and you'll have to carefully mark it out and check that uh, how do you protect the finish what i would probably do is get some masking tape you can get like big two inch masking tape or even the one inch stuff will do and Cover the whole surface that you want to protect in masking tape, but detack the tape first. You can actually buy expensive masking tape, which is made for lacquered finishes, and it's called what they call low tack. But you can just use ordinary masking tape, and just what I do is I just stick it on my t shirt, peel it off again, and then you've got, you've got low tack masking tape, and you can just basically stick that all over your top to protect it. Of course, it's not gonna protect it if you drop something on it sharp, or it's not gonna protect it from the router. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, extreme care is required. Um, so if you're working on your own guitar, that's one thing, but working on somebody else's pride and joy is another thing altogether. So, um, I definitely wouldn't recommend that unless you consider yourself to be, um, you know, pretty proficient. Okay, Mark, can I just butt in because um, uh, Rock and Roller 912 has asked, is the string spacing the same on both pickups? No, no, it's not. Um, the neck, obviously, the, the neck is tapered, so the bridge pickup is wider than the neck pickup. And also, you'll find there's also, there's basically two widths of bridges. There's trem width and then standard width. Um, trems tend to be wider and so you actually get trem spacing pickups as well. So you get, um, you get your, your humbucker with wider poles, pole pieces. These will be spread out more. Um, so that's something to watch for if you're building a guitar for sure. Um, make sure you get pickups that are the right spacing depending on whether you're having a, um, a narrow spacing or a wide spacing. They usually call it, uh, they usually call them humbuckers with trem spacing um, or wide spacing. So it's definitely something to check. One of the reasons for doing a drawing. Um, when you are doing a drawing, by the way, as I was saying right at the very start, it's a decision making process. You've probably already made most of the decisions in your head. So if you know what pickups you want, then you can order them all in advance, order your parts in advance, then you can lay them out on your drawing and check everything fits before you actually do any cutting of wood. OK, Mark, um, whilst you're on that, um, David Stead has just messaged to say, if I want to split the coils on a humbucker, would I need to get a specific pickup or can I do it with any humbucker? You can actually do it with any humbucker, but it can be really difficult. And uh, let me explain. So a humbucker has, uh, it's basically two, here's a single coil. It's basically a, a coil of wire around a magnet. These are magnets 
pole pieces to direct the magnetic flux towards the string and the coil senses the movement of the string, turns it into a signal. So you've got two wires coming out. That's the start and the end of the coil. So a humbucker has two coils, exactly the same. So with a splittable humbucker, you'll have four wires coming out. So that is the start and the end of um, That's the start and the end of two coils. And in this case, we join the two starts together and then you get a new start and an end, basically. And that, that works as a standard humbucker. So you connect the two starts of the coils together and then you get a standard humbucker. Um, so you need what you're looking for if you're ordering a pickup and you definitely want to split the coils, then what you're looking for is a four conductor Humbucker. 4C. Sometimes yeah, sometimes called 4C, four conductor. Um, some pickups just come with the two, and what it is is there's two starts are joined together inside the pickup. Um, let me see if I can show you in close up. So you see the um, this fibre tape. That fibre tape there is wrapped over the coil to protect the coil. Um, in some cases you can actually cut that tape off and you can get access to the tiny little fire wire, wires, the tiny little fine wires and you can actually um, desolder the join and add two more wires and then you've essentially made a four conductor humbucker. That's how it was originally done back in the day when they invented hum uh, splitting the coils on humbuckers. All pickups were just two wires. Somebody went in and tampered with it, desoldered it to make two separate coils and to give us the four separate wires. So yeah, it's much, much easier if you can buy a humbucker that's already a four conductor and then it makes it really easy to basically just turn one of the coils off. So um, it's a coil cut rather than a um, rather than a coil split, really, it's called a coil cut. So yes, um, another question, and then I'm going to do a super fast overview, okay. and then we're going to show, um, we've got a little slideshow at the end to show you of the same guitar, but made in about, I don't know, about 50 different ways with different features and customizations to show you what can be done. Okay, so... Uh, this will be the last question round then. Two. Right, so there's Guitar Bazaar said, uh, says, well, he's had two things. You can split any humbucker if it has a single two wire lead, you need to change it to a four wire, wire lead, which can be challenging for some, and that's the thing, isn't yes, it? Yes, it's some really difficult because the wires inside are really, really, really tiny. Mm -hmm. You're probably going to end up trashing the pickup, to be honest, unless you're a professional with some. Um, uh, I'd probably suggest you need uh, special tools, maybe. You certainly need to have fiddly fingers for that kind of thing. Okay. Not recommended, don't do it. And um, he also, he mentioned, you were, you were doing something earlier on with tape and he talked about painter's tape. He said you can get painter's tape that's low tack off the roll. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Um, it's more expensive uh, masking tape. You can buy lots of different types of masking tape, which is um, made for specific purposes. And uh, painter's tape is the low tack one. Thanks for that. Who was that? That was Guitar Bizarre. Guitar Bizarre. Cheers for that. Right, and um, so Andrew Kalela um, has asked, um, can you oh, can you explain any tips on cutting templates for routers? Well, there is a section on the course. Um, I've got a whole module about making patterns where I show you how to make all of these patterns yourself. Or you can, um, with, like I say, Carol's busy um, trying to get these on the, on the shop for you so you can just buy them and save yourself a bit of time. I reckon it's going to take you a half a day or a day just, just to make your initial set of patterns before you can start making your guitar. But it's all covered on the online course. Um, so, yeah, you'll, you'll need to become a premium member and, and find out how to do that. But um, to cut a very long story short, 
we bandsaw it out roughly and then um, rasp foil or sand down to the line until we've made ourselves a pattern. Um, No, I'm looking for a master pattern angle. What I tend to do is make, I'll make a pattern, but then I won't use it. I'll copy it and I will use the copy. And then I keep my master to one side. And then if something happens to my, the one that I'm using, then I've always got my master. I can take another copy um, without having to make the whole thing again from scratch. So yeah, making them from scratch takes quite a lot of work if you're doing it by hand the hard way, but it's all covered on the course. To cut a long story short, you bandsaw it out or you cut it out with whatever saw you've got. And then you file, rasp and sand it down to the size that you want. And you can do test cuts, keep testing it until it's the right size. Easy peasy. Um, yeah, a lot of the work is obviously in making these patterns, um, which, is, which is why we're, we're, um, we're starting to make them for you. And, um, to save you half a day to a day's work. When so say, when you say we, when I say we, I mean our the the uh, Darren King's our CNC expert, so he's making them for us. Back press, so they'll be in the shop, won't they? They're they're almost there. Yeah, almost there. Right. With okay. those. There was one one last question. Right, so that's right. three three of our two last questions. Last right. question Sorry. then. My belly's been rumbling for 20 minutes. Oh, stop it, right, listen. So, um, somebody, somebody asked earlier on, and I'm afraid I'm, I can't remember, um, somebody asked if you'd ever used shirtler tuners. And I don't think we have used the tuners, but um, we've used pickups, haven't we? Yeah, we've used shirtler pickups on acoustics, I think. Um, but any name brand like that, you can rest assured they're going to be good quality. Um, to get above that kind of quality then you really need to go to handmade so there is a guy for instance it's robson isn't it robson tuners in the uk there is a guy in the uk make hand makes his own tuners i think it's robson, think it's robson tuners i mean what a guy what a hero oh, um support guys like that but the thing is um your shirtless and your your goatos and um, all those they're all made in huge factories um and so the, the quality is um, much, much better than it used to be on uh, manufactured guitars. Um, I, I wouldn't fault any of these, um, but if you really want the best, you've got to spend the money. Um, a handmade set of tuners is going to cost you several hundreds of pounds. So bear we can that in show mind. You some next, another time where we've got, yeah, um, I think we've got a set with somewhere. A set of Robson's on. Um, I'll just show you these tuners as well. These are ratio. These are. Um, you get a lot of engineers who get into guitar making. Nice. And this is a particular um, engineer's take on uh, guitar tuners. So they're basically made, they're called ratios because you turn them one full turn and it changes the note by one semitone, apparently. Um, I would guess they probably nearly work. <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be different if you change your gauge of strings. Um, and that's why there's different ones for uh, acoustics or electrics, for instance. So you have to be a bit careful there. Um, but yeah, just wanted to show you those available in different colours. Um, we've got and some of these in and, stock. And electric and acoustic. Yeah, I just said that. I just Did mentioned you? that. Sorry, yeah. I'm trying to keep up with TV 101. Okay, that's all the questions at the moment. So are you. Um... Right, so. I'm, I'm going to do a very quick overview now um, before we go into the uh, the last slideshow. Um, so, you, why would you want a custom guitar? It's because there's a certain feature that you cannot get when you walk into a shop. There isn't one in there. There, there isn't a guitar in the shop with a particular feature that you need or want. That's why people come to me and I build them a custom guitar or they come here to build their own. Um, so the advantage of a custom guitar is that you can literally dial in every single aspect of it. So um, obvious one would be the shape. 
So um, very easy to change the shape. I could make this guitar any shape you want. This could have been an Explorer. All we would have done is just cut out the shape different, you see? Same guitar, different shape. Um, headstock shapes as well. I've got a whole different pile of, um, of templates here. So this could have been any shape. These are the kind of things that you work out on your drawing. Um, because I've got a whole stack of patterns now, I can literally place these on my drawing and see what it looks like. And then when I find one I like, I draw around it. If you're designing your own, there's a section on that on the course. Um, designing your own headstock, it's not as easy as it looks. Um, so shape is one of the things you can easily customise. If you walk into a shop, you're stuck with what they've got. But if you're making your own, you can make it any shape you want. Make it in the shape of a digestive biscuit. <laughs> I think I might be hungry. Um, so shape, and then we've got style. So as we mentioned earlier, it could be a bolt-on neck, it could be a set neck like this, or it could be a through neck. If you're making it yourself, it's your choice. Um, the main difference is um, the size of the wooden blanks that you need to start with. And so that's what the drawing is all about. You do your drawing and then you can measure it to make sure you get pieces of wood that are big enough. Or you can go through your shed and try your different pieces of wood until you find one that suits. Um, so a good idea to do a drawing first. Um, we, by the way, this guitar is, uh, the plans for this are available free to download. So you don't have to do your own drawing, you can use ours. Um, so shape, construction style, that could be bolt on, set neck or through neck. Um, and size, of course, if you're making it yourself, um, often from my experience, it's because a guy comes to me and he says, I can't get a neck fat enough. I need a wider neck and I can't get one big enough. So will you make me one? Or the opposite way around, can it be narrower? or wider, or thinner, or whatever. So if you're making it yourself, then that's completely up to you. Um, hardware, of course, you can choose all your own hardware. Um, whether you want a trim, a fixed bridge, gold, black, or chrome, anything you like. If you're making it yourself, it's, it's your choice, isn't it? Um, and the last thing is um, the, the, the actual finish. If it's your own guitar, you can just oil it. If you really want to play it just quickly, an oiled finish is the fastest, easiest. But if you really want to go to town on it, then um, you can use uh, beautiful, exotic, fancy woods, or you can, you can make this exact same guitar just with fancy woods. It looks like a completely different guitar. Um, or you can spray it different colors. So finishing is the last thing. Um, and as we mentioned earlier, I am currently working on putting together um, how to finish a guitar course, which uh, hopefully will be done by Christmas. So um, we're just about done. We're going to play you before we finish uh, a last slideshow. Carol's jumping up and down again. What do you want, Carol? Hey, uh, Piotr. He says he thinks a bolt-on neck is easy to make. It's more forgiving and easy to fix misalignment. Um, but that's maybe a subject for another day as well. Yeah, there is that. It is kind of swings and roundabouts at the end of the day. Um, your opinion might vary. I did include how to make a bolt on neck um, is also included on the website as well. So if you prefer to make a bolt on neck, that's covered. We've got you covered. And just we got you covered. Right, listen, just before Guitar Bizarre is saying goodbye, but he he said Thanks for stopping by Guitar Bizarre. He says that handmade guitars have been proven to make a man happier. Fact. <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. And in this world of they have been craziness. What more could we want? So are you ready for your for fun, just to yep. prove, so, prove yourself right, isn't it? Yep, so we're now going to play a little, um, a very little uh, short slideshow of some of the guitars that have been made in here or at home by you guys. Um, pictures, right. pictures of guitars that are, they're all the same basic design, but um, Carol's, so pedantic sometimes. They've all been made here in the workshop. They're either your... But not all by me. They're either your, your 
own bandsmen's or they've been on the Bailey Builder. Thank you for explaining that for Thank us, Carol. You. So you can now play the film. Are you pushing yourself in? And uh, we're not going to hang around at the end. Um, maybe if you've got any questions, leave them in the chat and we'll see what we can do. Uh, yeah, I'm ready when you are, Carol. The Bailey Bandsman. So that's the course that we ran and there's four guys that were on it. You can see they're all different and they're all the same at the same time. Different woods, different colours. These, uh, um, these are actually the S1, which is how the Bandsman started. You'll notice a subtle change. It was actually based on a Hamer that came into my workshop. So Gibson can't sue me for that, can they? And that's the actual Bandsman standard as it is now in 2020 or 2021 bandsman um left-handed or right-handed that's a left-handed one can tell by the bridge and so different body wood that is actually reclaimed um godwood we call it godwood which is reclaimed pine from a church pew and we just filled all the screw holes and the cracks and it looks ace and that's a nice bit of older that's the old shape, the S1. And that's a one piece flamed brown maple body. So yeah, like I was saying, you can just change the body wood and it's like a different guitar. There's a piece of walnut there. And spalted, beautiful piece of spalted maple. That's flamed jarrah, gorgeous piece of wood. So yeah, same guitar, change the wood. Um, different hardware color there as well, you'll notice. Yeah, we're on caps now, so you can stick a thin piece of wood on the top to make a cheap piece of wood look really spectacular. So there's a, a few different types of caps there that we wanted to show you. And there's the Jarrah one again. Um, different... Uh, different neck joints there. And body shaping. That's something we didn't really get into, but... Um, you don't, the top doesn't have to be flat. You can have the top shaped as well. Um, it can be carved or in that case, we just carved the horn. And this is a through neck. You can see it's not actually finished yet, but um, that big lump that you can see there is about to be carved off. Uh, unfortunately, there isn't a picture of it finished, but that shows you that it's still a bandsman, but it's a through neck and um, during construction, that massive lump of the heel is going to be carved off. Um, and that's what we call fake binding. So you can see um, the colours just on the top uh, and it doesn't go down the side. In that case, there's no colour involved. That's just a piece of Tasmanian blackwood. Absolutely gorgeous. Another piece of brown maple. Nice that's piece of mahogany. Yeah, notice that's a flat top and there's a piece of shaping, body shaping, where we've just carved the horn. And that one there has got a full carve on the front. So we've shaped the whole front on that one. That's a lot more difficult than a flat top. So we don't recommend it for the beginner, but I do show you, um, I do show you on the course how it's done. And here's a beautiful piece of, um, what's it called again? Buckeye Burl. Buckeye Burl. And that's carved as well and also sprayed with a gloss. The colour there is all natural colour, there's no colour, it's just the natural colour of the wood. Nice piece of ash. And that's a mahogany back with a wenge top. Black hardware. hardware. Yep, so easy to change the hardware. And this one's got a full burst on it. And that's the, the, the wrap over bridge with the, um, the fully tunematic version that I showed you earlier. Obviously, if you're making your own guitar, you can put whatever electrics you want on it. I really like that one. Look at that. So this was made by somebody on our course. Um, another thing we didn't even touch upon is um, there's a fancy inlay on that headstock. If you're making your own guitar, then you can do your own inlays as well. Um, this one in particular has got a, a really nice looking scratch plate on it. So that's another thing you can add um, really easily is um, a, a scratch plate 
um, one way to protect the finish and uh, also add a bit of character to the guitar. Um, when it comes to actual electrics, I would recommend that you keep it simple. Volume tone and a switch or something simple like that. Um, but there is a world out there of electronics um, and there's whole websites dedicated to that if you want to do something a bit more, um, a bit more custom or a bit special. Uh, there's whole websites out there where you can find wiring diagrams for that. What we're all about is how to actually go about building the thing. That's one of our um, bandsman's Nantucket's guitar with a trem on it and some EMGs. That's that what we call Godward again. And um, finishes. so we're on to finishes now. Um, yeah, black and white are the hardest, by the way. <laughs> and a full gloss finish is obviously a lot more work than a matte finish. Matte finishes like this one are a lot easier. It doesn't need polishing. Whereas a gloss finish, um, there's probably as much work in polishing as there is in building the rest of the guitar. In some cases, anyway. Yeah. Try and ignore the repeats. There's another carved top with a, an emerald burst. And this one's got the fake binding on. As you can see, we've only put this, the colour on the front and we didn't put any colour on the side. And then it looks like the guitar's got binding. It's what we call faux binding or fake binding. Um, no colour, that's pure Tasmanian blackwood. And um, there's a quilted maple with burst. So um, from simple to one bad. of my favourite bandsmen's that was. And here's um, our Tommy Emmanuel playing the bandsman that I made. I made that bandsman in nine hours in a tent at the Kirk Michael International Guitar Show. And then Tommy Emmanuel and Martin Taylor had a little fight over who was going to play it. <laughs> <laughs> so there's Martin Taylor playing it as well. Shredded. Tommy looking on in shredded. awe. Um, yeah, so if you didn't know, Martin Taylor can shred, <laughs> let me tell you. Um, so that guitar was made in nine hours in a tent, in a field. And, um, and then they played it in the highlight of the whole festival. The whole weekend it was the highlight. They sold more raffle tickets than they'd ever sold before. And um, yeah, it was won by a guy who took it back to Ireland. And I still have a piece of wood from this guitar somewhere over there in the workshop. The um, no, that was the last picture, wasn't it? No. Uh, we'll go back to it then. Go back to it then, I can't do it from here. We missed the last picture. Oh, there's me and Tommy. <laughs> oh, look how young and attractive I look. And there we are, the Bailey workshop, where it all takes place. Right, folks, thank you so much if you've made it right till the end. We just wanted to show you there a few different options. They're all Bailey Bandsmans that have been built here in the workshop, either by me or on the course. And you're gonna get Clinton's as well, was the ultimate. If you wanna see the ultimate um, Bandsman, we reckon Clinton's uh, takes the biscuit. If you go to uh, the guitar making site, um, you'll see uh, Clinton's put a post up there of the, the Bandsman that he built which is a uh, hollow body with F holes. It's pretty spectacular. So, um, yeah. You might as well point the ones behind you, which we didn't, I forgot to put in the thing as well. Oh yeah, a couple of ours. So the, the Nantucket, this is one that you didn't see. This is our, um, oh, I love this guitar. I think it's wow cool. Here's a left-handed version, sold out of right-handed versions, I think. Um, but yeah, I'll make you one if you want me to. This has got the, the, the bare knuckle Nantucket pickup in it, which I think is the best sounding P90 bar none. Absolutely awesome. And it's just got a volume and a tone. And the amount of variation of sounds you can get just with that is amazing. It doesn't need two pickups. You can do it all just with a volume and tone. Um, so yeah, the Bailey Nantucket. Why is it called awesome Nantucket? Guitar. 
because of the pickups. Got Nantucket pickup. They're knuckle Nantucket. Yeah, I've said that okay. about three times, Carol. Oh. She don't listen to a word I say. I don't listen to a word he says. So anyway, thanks for watching, folks. Thank um, you. Carol's going to give me a slap now, and um, we're going to go away and uh, have a cup of tea and something to eat because I'm starving. <laughs> What I want you guys to do is make sure you like and subscribe and click the bell icon and all that. And uh, head over to the forum, become a premium member if you want access to the full courses. Um, or if you just want to lurk, you can become a free member and um, check out what we're all up to. And let us know what you're up to as well. So if you're designing a guitar, take a picture of it when you've finished, take a picture of the drawing and upload it on the forum and we'll all check it out for you. And let us know, let, let you know what we think. All right, so designing a guitar is uh, a decision making process. But the most important thing, as we all know, in the world of guitar making, is to check twice and cut once. <laughs>